Welcome to the PTZ Optics booth. I'm Eric Pratt with US Broadcast. I'm here with Paul Richards from PTZ Optics. Thank you, Eric. I really appreciate you ha having you here. Um, just so you guys know, well, Eric, why don't I ask you, tell us about yourself, tell us about uh, what your experiences are here at NAB. So NAB is always a great show to do every year because of uh, all of the different synergy that it happens between all the different manufacturers coming to one show floor and the customers kind of milling around between them like bees. And uh, you get a, a real amazing cross-pollination of ideas. Uh, and it's always great to see what uh, manufacturers always bring out really important stuff at the show. And so this is a, it's a great show to be at. Yeah, thanks for, for helping me kick off day two. So this is uh, the live stream's just starting. A lot of people can't make it to NAB, but they still want to feel the energy here, hear about some of the new stuff. So you are the exclusive US distributor for vMix. Tell us a little bit about vMix. We're going to show it off to. Uh, all right, so we're actually using vMix to do the stream here today on the PTZ Optics booth. They're also located here at uh, booth 7920 uh, South Lower Hall. Uh, vMix has uh, several different product offerings. They have a, uh, a software product, uh, which ranges in price from $60 to 1200 depending on features. Those features include PTZ Optics control, um, NDI support, uh, replay, the ability to stream live to the internet as we're doing here today. Uh, they also have um, uh, hardware turnkey solutions. So there's the vMix Go, which is an eight input portable solution. It uh, looks sort of like a, a, a lunchbox with a screen on it. Uh, it's really an ungratif uh, not a very nice way to describe it, but just to give you a, a, an idea at home, um, you can look it up on their website and released new at the show is the vMix U. Oh, yes. uh, yeah, the vMix U is a one U unit uh, and it runs uh, vMix 4K on it as one channel of replay. Um, it's got uh, room for two SSDs in the front and uh, four SDI inputs. And it's really uh, getting a lot of good traction at the show because it fits a niche that the vMix portable, uh, the vMix Go portable unit did not. Even though the vMix U is by some definitions portable, it's great for OB vans, uh, any kind of uh, flight packs, those kinds of things because of its form factor being one U and it's light those kinds of things. So those are the, those are the products that they're, um, that, that they're showing at the booth. Uh, and again, new at the show is PTZ control and uh, NDI uh, support so that it's compatible with all of the products that are compatible with a TriCaster, for example, and a TriCaster itself. So you can actually use the vMix to feed a TriCaster or a TriCaster to feed a vMix. Um, all of the products like uh, New Blue Effects's uh, Titler uh, you could use that to feed a vMix, and you could actually use other vMixes to feed a vMix. So you can stack four of these 1U units in, um, in a single 4U space. You could get an amazing amount of power and number of inputs. You could set one up as a replay. Uh, you could set uh, one up as titling, another to do um, graphics and animation, and then, then the fourth to do switching. So it's, uh, it's really popular. It's one of the amazing things. Uh, I was mentioning the great things that happen at NAB. Uh, NDI seems to be getting a lot of press and coverage because of the, the unique situation, because it's an open source um, uh, standard. It's, an open, it's not open source. It's an open standard. Yes, thanks. Um, <clears throat> Many manufacturers are supporting it because there's no licensing fee, so you're getting a lot of interoperability. We're a little bit out of focus. Oh, no. we're a little, sorry, we're not a little off focus. It does autofocus, but um, so yeah, sorry about that. Um, I was just thinking we'd get a better view, yeah. but you know what? Well, let's, let's talk a little bit about what you're showing here today. So we've got some of the PTZ Optics cameras. Uh, do we have any shot? Oh, we've got this. Yeah, so we've, yeah, we actually have a PTZ Optics camera here, um, and we've got, we've got three cameras that we're switching in between. So, um, Eric, why don't we go ahead and show the back shot so that sh it shows, let's merge this really quickly. So here we are now, um, with, this is our wireless Huddle Cam Air. So um, now you can kind of see we've got vMix on this side, uh, we've got the output over here, and this is completely wireless USB. So there's a little bit of, there's, it normally it works 100% great, but there's, probably 50 to 100 wireless networks going on and we're getting a little bit of video tearing. Yeah, uh, trade shows are usually notorious for destroying wireless uh, signals, but the, the Huddle Cam is holding its own uh, under these uh, uh, conditions. So uh, it's a great example of its ability to uh, wirelessly broadcast from your camera up there that you're seeing us from down to, uh, down to this guy right here. Yep, this so is the wireless receiver here. This is the wireless receiver. And all that's being run to the Huddle Cam Air is power. Yeah. Yeah. And we're running that into the vMix. 
no wires. So you can imagine you can just plop that right down in the middle of your conference table and you don't have to deal with uh, running an HDMI off to whatever your encoder system is or whatever you're using to broadcast your conferencing or uh, if, if you've got an area of inaccessibility for, um, uh, for a live production, uh, it would also be an ideal solution. Yeah, it really was built for the, the conferencing market where you've got that boardroom and you can't uh, run cables everywhere. You know, it needs to be perfect, clean, and sleek. Uh, but the broadcast market has been adopting it as well. So let's switch over to our next camera here. So this camera over here is going to take us over to our joystick controller. So here's our joystick controller, um, which is controlling this other camera. Um, so I'm not exactly sure the best way to show this off, Eric, um, because... The camera that it's controlling. Okay, let's. What we'll do is let's go ahead and now uh, take this camera and move it. I guess down here. So that's the camera that we're controlling with the joystick. So that's about as low as it will go. Um, Eric's showing off the camera there. Um, so that's our three cameras. Um, you know, we just wanted to give you guys a brief overview of what we're doing here at NAB. Yep. Um, let's see. What else did I want to ask you, Eric? How can people get in touch with you? So um, we sell the PTZ Optics through um, a network of resellers. If you want to contact us from our usbroadcast.co website, uh, that's one way to do it. Uh, you can also go through PTZ Optics, um, and uh, they have, uh, you have a, a website that brings you to different resellers. So Matthew Richards is our, our partner uh, reseller manager. So what he does is he works with all of the partners and then uh, refers them to the, the best distributor that, that fits their needs. Obviously, U.S. Broadcast is the exclusive distributor for vMix, so if vMix is in the solution, that makes you guys the best distributor for that situation. Tell us a little bit about what you found uh, today and tell us about the resellers you've been working with and all that. Well, you know, we've had a ton of partners come by and, uh, you know, everyone's really excited about the, the new products we have, the new developments. Um, so U.S. Broadcast has been great, you know, um, bringing us a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, end users here, and uh, it's been a great show so far. I agree. So we've just been really happy. Um, are there any other questions that we want to talk about with U.S. Broadcast while we have them? He's going to have to go back to the VMix booth sooner or later. Um, while we have you, um, camera control. We do have IP camera control with VMix, and that was one of the great things. I'm so glad they brought together. All the new tech NDI stuff is now available in vMix as well. Do you want to talk about the Gen 2 stuff? Yeah, let's talk about the Gen 2 cameras while we have them. Um, so here's, here's one of the Gen 2 cameras right here. And so the main, and I'm going to hold that, the main upgrades were uh, instead of H.264, we now have H.264, H.265, and MJPEG. So with H.265, also known as HEVC, high efficiency video coding, um, it gives you about a 30 to 40% less bandwidth, so better compression with the same quality as H.264. So in this new IP world with the new IP workflows, anything that you can eke out on your network is a good thing. So we, we, we paid for the royalties for the H.265, so that's built in. Also, MJPEG streaming is great for low latency, just dumping of uncompressed video. So if you need a really high video for post-production, you can. Add the, it's really ideal, especially with a camera like this. So, and also the other upgrade is 1080p60. So imagine, you know, let's say you're using vMix and you want to do the USB directly to vMix. Well, you might want to just dump. It's almost a way to ISO record without having to do it. Now with the NDI ISO recorder uh, and vMix, it's actually getting so much easier. Uh, and it's there's multiple different ways. That you there's so many ways to do that. So you really, it's it's a way of uh, working to support the way that the customer wants to solve this problem. So instead of having to modify their workflow to meet your product's needs, you're working the other way around. You're supporting their workflow so that you can do it the way that they want to do it. So if they want to do H.265, or if they want to record in vMix, or if they want to dump MJPEG footage, that's it's it's up to them. It, it, it's whatever solution fits their needs the best, depending on where the camera is, what software they're using, uh, what quality they need, what they're doing with the footage afterwards. All of these things are going to influence those decisions. Now, the 1080p60 seemed to be a big deal with a lot of people. Tell, tell us about, from your perspective, from a vMix perspective, from your industry knowledge, how important is 1080p60? So a lot of, um, a lot of people doing live production, it's very important for, uh, for them to do 1080p60 because uh, there's a couple of different reasons. Uh, a lot of them feel that it's smoother. So it delivers a better finished quality. And with the new Gen 2 version of the camera supporting 1080p60, 
vMix supporting 1080p60, it gives situations like iMag a really finished, uh, a really highly finished quality product. There's also another interesting thing about 1080p60. Since vMix is a very low latency solution, um, the 1080p60 actually gives you slightly less latency because instead of delivering a frame every 30 seconds, you're delivering a frame every 60 seconds. And so you're actually, in reality, you're shaving off a half a frame by being able to deliver those frames twice as fast. It's fascinating, but it's, uh, it's, it's in a very important in an iMag environment where latency is the killer of all, all those situations. So when you have the, the talent up on the stage and you've got their image next to them, how much the audio is out of sync is, is crucial. Um, keeping it in a sync as much as possible. And with the 1080p60, obviously that's just getting you that, where, I mean, when, when we're talking about latency here, every little tiny frame and millisecond counts. And that, that one little feature is crucial to some people who are doing iMac. Yeah, and I was, I was surprised, because we wrote 1080p30, I thought that was fine. And again and again, people were saying, look, we need 1080p60. Of course, everyone wants broadcast frame rates. That's not coming. We're hoping that the 1080p30 and the 1080p60 is something that you can ingest into the system that you're using. It's not a problem with vMix. It's not a problem with the TriCasters. And it doesn't seem to be a problem with Wirecast. There are issues with certain AHA pieces and different things that only accept broadcast frame rates. And the only answer I have for you there is you can use a, a decimator. Yep. They're all over the place over here in MDHX. Um, unfortunately, we do not support the broadcast frame rates. Everything is a full frame rate. Um, so that was one thing I wanted to get in there, but we weren't able to. Uh, there's a little bit of a faster chipset in there, obviously, to accommodate the 1080p60. Um, is there anything else I'm missing, Matt, with the Gen 2? Um, you know what we did? Uh, there, there's a bunch of updates. If, if, you, if you looked at the Gen 1 versus the Gen 2 as far as firmware, there are more options in there. Um, and our open source control software has been significantly upgraded as well. Um, some of the things that we're adding in there is the ability to access the on-screen display menu, um, which was a big thing for us. Um, just to be able to do that remotely. Oh, wait, did you tell them about the new pricing? Oh, yes, the pricing is... Exactly the same. the same. They were able to create all of these new features without uh, upgrading the cost of the price. So that's an amazing thing that you guys were able to do. Uh, and really, it's a, a extreme value to the customer. So it's a very... Uh, well done. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And it's something that, that a lot of times, this is what will happen. They'll say, hey, why don't you have this feature? Why don't you have that feature? And what we say is, look, we're looking into it, but if it's going to add 200 or $300, that's not where we want to be. We want to be significantly less, but providing exactly what most 80, 80 to 90% of our customers need. You know, we do get these requests, guys. We know the requests that you guys are making sometimes. And you have to believe that we are looking into it, but we're trying to wait until that price point hits the right place where the balance between features and value are there and that's where we're trying to be and we've built a, a name for ourselves to have a really quality product so that these products are built to last they have a three-year warranty and we repair and fulfill all of our warranties from philadelphia so when you call us you get a person on the phone not only is on the phone to help you but knows about tricasters knows about vmix understands wirecast and we want to help you guys. Our guy, Andy, over here will spend, sometimes he's spending hours with customers trying to help them. And they didn't even buy the cameras. Um, you know, maybe they were using a Sony camera and he finds that out after two hours. I'm like, Andy, you have to you know, work with our customers, please. It's a space of time. But we're hiring more support teams. We're hiring more salespeople. Uh, we've been growing significantly. And it's all thanks to you guys, our customers. Thank you so much for supporting us. I think we're on, a, on really on to something. Eric, thank you so much for being here and being a part of this. I really Thanks appreciate the partnership. Um, I guess we'll, we'll call that a day for our, our opening NAB. At um, 11 a.m., we're going to do the New Tech TriCaster. 1 p.m., we do uh, Wirecast. And then 2 p.m., I believe, don't quote me on this, that's when we're showing off VMIX. Of course, this is a VMIX show right here. We'll be back. I'll, I'll be back at 2 if you, uh, if, you, yeah, if you really enjoyed this presentation. Come back and see it again. Come back at 2 o'clock. These are all going to be recorded as well, so they're available uh, so that we can share them. This, is a, this was a great little update, a great little huddle meeting. Thank you so much, everybody. Enjoy the live show.